In order to assess whether the Pentium M is truly obsolete in today's world, we will need to look at the hardware that we will be using to test this. This is of course a Windows XP and Centrino based laptop, a Dell Inspiron 9300, pretty much the fastest Pentium M machine that you could get. Featuring GeForce 6800 graphics, 2GB of RAM and a 2.13GHz Pentium M, and a full HD or actually 1920x1200 display, this is pretty much the best that you can get. However, it will be running Windows 10 and Office 2013. This should be interesting. While we are waiting for the Windows installation to complete, I think it is time for a little bit of a history lesson on the Pentium M. The Pentium M was introduced to replace the Pentium 4 mobile because it was really inefficient. It had a high TDP, high heat output, and it needed very high clock speeds to even do anything. The Pentium M, being based on the Pentium 3 microarchitecture, is significantly more efficient, and therefore it can run at the same level of performance at a significantly lower TDP as well as a lower clock speed. The Pentium M got two revisions in its lifespan, one being the Banius and one being the Dothan Core. The Banius Core was the initial release. It was based on 130 nanometer technology and it ran up to about 1.7 GHz. The second generation, Dothan Core, was available on 500, 533 MHz FSB and was significantly more efficient even than Banius. The, the Dothan Core also supports physical address extension natively and executable disable bit which is required by Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10. So you can run Windows 10 no problem on a Pentium M of the Dothan variety. Like I said, the best Dothan Pentium M was the 780 running at 2.2 GHz. Mine is a 770 running at 2.1. That's pretty much the whole basis of the Pentium M and its history. Now back onto the topic of the obsolescence of the Pentium M. So, like I pretty much just suggested, the Pentium M has been around for about 13 years. So, how does it still stack up? This laptop does meet the minimum requirements for Windows 10. Windows 10 32-bit requires pretty much the same thing as Windows 8 and Windows 7 did. A 1 GHz capable CPU, 1 GB of RAM, and 20 GB of hard drive space. Unfortunately, well, I think you know that the Pentium 3 could not run Windows 7 very well, even though it did meet the minimum requirements. So, how well will a Pentium M fare on Windows 10 and very latest Office software? Because it also meets the minimum requirements for that. Because it supports the very latest in software from a hardware compatibility standpoint, it should run them sort of acceptably at least. At least in a way that you can properly use them. Obsolescence is only really achieved once it has become unusable. If you have to wait for like 10 seconds for it to start up, that's fine, if you can then use it properly. And that's what we're going to test here in this video. If you fire up an application and once it has finished loading, can you use it? Will it work? For instance, if I want to open Word, I want to be able to type as soon as the cursor starts blinking. And every single keystroke I do needs to be registered on the screen. If this requirement is not met, that means it is not capable of doing that particular task. So the things that we will be testing in this video then are, of course, Office. So we're going to be opening up a bunch of Office applications, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, to see how it works, if the, re if the uh, response is any good. We're going to be testing web browsing performance, which, is, which consists of two things. One is web media, which is YouTube, mostly. And the second thing is web browsing. Even some heavier sites should at least display properly and scroll um, acceptably, in my opinion, in order for it to get a passing grade. The last thing is gaming. Um, I'm not quite sure how this will pan out. We'll see once uh, we get the games up and running. I'll find a couple ones that are uh, period correct and we will see how they run on the Pentium M under Windows 10. So. Let's just leave this little Inspiron, or a little 17 inches, but, and uh, just let it finish the installation and then we get cracking with the testing. 
and that we will see what the conclusion is of the Pentium M and its obsolescence in 2016. All right, it is time to do some practice testing. Let's start by firing up Microsoft Word to see how it handles office tasks. Okay, waiting for the templates to load. There we go. Now we can open up a blank document. Came up pretty quickly. Okay, now we should be good to go in terms of typing. Some jabber about proofing tools. Lags behind a little bit. That seems to be fine-ish. Okay, Word appears to be working fine, actually, so it's good. Now let's try PowerPoint. Yeah, well, that's acceptable as well. Let's fire up Excel, see how fast that comes up. You know, apps open pretty quickly on this thing. It's, it's pretty okay. I think if you were to use Office 2010 or 2007, you would be absolutely golden. Of course, Excel is very responsive. Let's see how it redraws if we move around a little bit. There's a little bit of lag, nothing too exceptional though, so that's good. Um, I think it is finally time to give it a passing grade on Office. Seems to work absolutely fine, especially if you downgrade just one version. Next up is media consumption. How well can it play videos? I will be grading it on two fronts. One is SD video and two is HD video. Let's give it a shot, shall we? We're going to be using VLC Media Player. Let's open up VLC first. There we go, there's VLC. Let's open a file. I place both files on the desktop. We start with a SD video, which is an episode of Pokemon Season 2. Let's see how that runs. So you wanna be a master of Pokemon? Do you have the skills to be? Yep, works fine. SD video is a passing grade. Let's try HD video. This is 720p, MP4, an episode of Futurama, season 7, episode 4. This is full screen 720p. Before the copyright Nazi slipped my throat, Passing grade on HD video as well. This is starting to look very good for the Pentium M. Next up is web browsing. I will be grading two parts, like I said. Part one being um, web browsing in general, loading websites, and the other one being media consumption on the internet, which is YouTube, Vimeo, Vessel, whatever. I'll be using YouTube in my example. Let's open up Google first, very important test. And let's go to the website of CNN, which is generally regarded as a very heavy website. Let's see how long it takes to load up. The animation in the news feed there is a little bit laggy. 
But the page has loaded up, I think. Well, it's still loading some ads. Well, let's kill that. I'm going to wait for that. I've got more to do. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see if we can scroll through the website. It's a little bit laggy, but there's some screen tearing going on there. But honestly, as soon as I do a scroll, it does actually respond. So it is responsive, but a little bit laggy. Then again, this is a heavy website. Now I'll go to one of my favorite websites that I frequently visit. This loaded up pretty quickly. This website is very responsive, even though it has a lot of images on it. And last but not least, memecenter.com. This is generally regarded as a very heavy website because it's just full of images and ads. Lots of ads. Yeah, it's not terribly responsive here. But then again, it is still trying to load something. Let's kill the loading screen and see if we can scroll. Well, this page is not really responsive. For browsing, I'm going to give it a passing grade, but not wholeheartedly. Because if you keep the website a little bit more simple, then yes, it is a passing grade. If you really kick it up a notch with uh, heavy meme websites or photo websites or whatever, then it's definitely a fail. Let's try YouTube now. Let's test Big Buck Bunny, which is, of course, an HD clip. It is now playing HTML5 240p. This is full screen. Just waiting for it to catch up. Nope, it can't even handle 240p full screen. So that's a fail on web media. Definitely a fail there. Okay, the last thing that we need to test is gaming performance on the Pentium M. Of course, I will just say this first. Um, it will not run the latest games, of course, but I will be running some games from Pentium 4 era to see how it performs, or how they perform. I will be testing Arnold Tournament 2003 in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Let's get started. Okay then, it is time to fire up Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Let's see if it will run. NVIDIA, the way it's meant to be played. Yup, this does not have the ATR Radeon X300 on board. That's for sure. Okay, it crashed already. Well, that's a shame. No GTA then. No, I did not test them. Yes, I did update my video drivers, so... I guess there's something wrong there. I uh, guess I can't really play games on this, unfortunately. Okay, I will not grade it based on its gaming performance then. But at least uh, we can grade it on the other things. Let's get to the conclusion of this video. Well then, after these tests I think it is safe to conclude that the Pentium M is not yet fully obsolete yet. However, this was one of the top end models of the Pentium M lineup and performance wasn't optimal here and there, especially in Office, it was really suffering and on browsing some very heavy websites. So all in all, if you have an older Pentium M, like the Banias Core for one, or 1.5 GHz or even lower than that, then yes, it is most definitely obsolete. You really need a 2 GHz or faster Pentium M to do anything uh, at all really, to make it somewhat usable. 
you might get away with it on Windows XP, but Windows XP is not really recommended to use anymore nowadays. Um, Vista is dropping soon, in about a year. Windows 7 is a little bit too heavy on most Penny Mems that are older than the one that I used here, so that's also a thing to take into consideration. However, if you have a top-end Penny Mem like me, then no, it is not obsolete. You can play HD video, you can play SD video, you can play a couple games if you have proper drivers. <coughs> but I'll not get into. I'll, uh, I would get into that right now. Um, you can do office work, you can browse the web somewhat uh, decently, however you cannot uh, play YouTube, so you have to stick to local media. But if that doesn't bug you, then that's fine, and you don't have an obsolete laptop. However, if you are still running a Pentium, let me give you this advice. Upgrade as soon as you can to a dual-core machine. Core to do is really becoming li slightly low in the tooth now, so you might want to consider doing something a little bit better. However, don't go like really cheap PC with those uh, Celeron and uh, Pentium chips that are soldered, because those are mostly Atom-based and they're not even faster than a Core 2 Duo. So that's also one thing to take into consideration. However, if you're just a regular Joe like me that uh, likes to have fun with old hardware, then you can still use them just fine. But if you rely on a Pentium, you really should um, consider getting a job, um, doing some trades but definitely getting rid of it and moving on to a modern platform with, uh, for instance, a, a Pentium on uh, the modern sockets and not in those cheap PCs that you can buy off the shelf. So that is my verdict. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.